Hello, everyone. My name is Jiao Jiao Fan, and uh, uh, today I'm presenting the paper Neural Munch Map with a uh, Neural Munch Map Estimation and its Applications. This is the joint work with Shu Liu, Shao Jun Ma, Hao Ming Zhou, and Yong Xin Chen. Shu Liu is from UCLA, and all the others come from Georgia Tech. So from the title, we can see that the, pa the paper is about using neural network to compute a mountain map and about its applications. So to start with, we look at what is the mountain map. It is defined to be the minimizer of an integral over Cx, Tx, rho a dx. And the Cx, Tx is called the transport cost. It defines how much you need to pay for transporting the mass from x to tx. And it has to satisfy the constraint t push forward rho a equals to rho b. Here, the push forward map satisfies t push forward rho a e equals to rho a of t inverse of e. e is a measurable set. And the one can treat x, y as Euclidean spaces are n and r m. n and m are not necessarily equal. So this formulation has many applications in the generative model, multi-agent model control, and computer vision. Uh, later, we will review more applications about in, in our paper. And uh, you can see that we don't specify the cost to be have any sp particular uh, formula. And all the existing, uh, nearly all the existing works, uh, they work on L1 or L2 OT problems. So the cost is defined as the norm of X minus Y or the square norm of X minus Y. So how to deal with the OT problem with general cost? This is the question we ask in the paper. And our answer is to introduce the Lagrange multiplier F for T push forward rho A equals to rho B and formulated the saddle scheme. The saddle scheme is to maximize F over LTF and then minimize T for L and TF. And the LTF is just defined as the Lagrange function, which uh, relaxes the constraint of T push forward rho A equals to rho B. And we want to compute the slow point t hat f hat of this of this equation so that t hat is the minimizer of l t f hat and f hat is the maximizer of l t hat f. To solve this problem, we parameterize t and f by neural networks t theta and f eta. Theta and eta are the parameters of the map t and the Lagrange multiplier f. And we also replace the integral to be the batchified version. So uh, can I cannot calculate the integral in closed form, so we just estimate it by samples. And the algorithm is just a basic uh, gradient, uh, multi-step gradient descent ascent algorithm. So for our, every outer loop, we sample a bunch of samples from row A and row B. Then we update uh, theta to decrease this a uh, batchified cost function, and we update eta to increase it. So in practice, we update the theta more than eta. So this k1 is roughly around 10, and eta is between one and three. Here we briefly compare our method and wgan. Our method is written in the first formulation, and wgan in the second uh, red formulation. You can see that uh, although we are both max min and min max, but our uh, minimization over the transport map is in the inner loop and they are in the outer loop. Also, they have constraint over the discriminator D, but we don't have uh, any constraint on our Lagrange multiplier. And on the other hand, our method, the optimal value is same on rho and rho B. This is the optimal cost, and it is generally not zero. But for WGAN, the ideal optimal value is just a zero because when uh, the push forward of G push forward row A equals to row B, then this WGAN would achieve the optimal value. Uh, finally, uh, our method computes the optimal map T star su such that not only T star push forward row A equals to row B, and it also minimizes the transport cost. 
but for W gun, it only compute a feasible map such that G push forward row equals to row B, but it doesn't care about the transport cost. Next, we talk about our theoretical guarantee about our method. So firstly, uh, we introduce the existence of still point and its consistency with Monge map. So if row A and the row B are compactly supported and the row A is absolutely continuous with respect to the big measure and assume, and assume cost uh, is uh, continuous and the partial derivative of cost with, with respect to x is an injective map. And then there exists a finite constant such that the cost is lower bounded than the slow point of L exists. Furthermore, if t hat and f hat is a slow point of L, then t hat is the Monge map. This is a simplified version of theorem two and corollary one from our paper. If you are more interested, you can check the paper for more details. Next is a posterior error estimation via duality gaps. So in this theorem, we consider both uh, the space are uh, in the same dimension, Rd. And suppose at a certain organization stage, we obtain T and F. So here we assume that the second order partial derivative with respect to X and Y as a matrix is invertible. And the second order partial derivative with respect to Y is independent of X. And F is a C concave function on RD and some other standard conditions on rho A, rho B and C hold. Then we define the duality gaps E1 equals to LTF minus infimum of T tilde L T tilde F. And then E2 equals to the optimal third point value minus infimum of T tilde L T tilde F. Now I denote T star as the Monge map of the OT problem. Then the L2 distance between T and this ground truth Monge map T star is actually upper bounded by square root of twice E1 plus E2. And here, beta is a positive with a function depending on C, T star, and F. So we emphasize this is a posterior error estimation. So uh, actually, we don't have this supremum infimum L T tilde F tilde in advance. So it is only posterior error estimation. So next, we talk about uh, some of our applications. So the first application is text to image generation. This pipeline is motivated by DALI-2 model, which is a diffusion model trained in the latent space of clip embedding. And basically, we replace the diffusion model to be our OT map. Uh, then the after we map the embedding from text space to the image space, uh, we use a pre-trained decoder to decode the image embedding to a real image. So here, uh, the source distribution is text encoding as a matrix uh, 77 by 768. And the targeted distribution is of image embedding in uh, vector space 768. And we also emphasize that we don't require paired data. This is different with DALI-2 uh, because for our method, we don't really need paired data. And we choose the transport cost to be negative cosine similarity between R X and Y. R is a matrix that projects the uh, matrix X to uh, the same space of the uh, vector Y. So R X is also in the space of uh, 768 vector space. And we choose this cosine similarity to be the cost because the clip embedding is pre-trained to uh, maximize the cosine similarity for paired data and minimize the cosine sim similarity for unpaired data. So to, to generate a image that is matched with the text prompt, we need to minimize this negative cosine similarity. So now we uh, present some results of our generated images. The first row is the image generated using text embedding. It is really bad because 
the image embedding and the text embedding are essentially in different spaces. And we cannot simply just replace image embedding by text embedding. The second role is to generate an image using our generated embedding. And the third role is uh, using some uh, DALI 2 line model, which is a uh, open source the DALI 2 model uh, as, as the prior embedding. The fourth role is to use real embedding of image to generate, uh, to decode an image. And the, the last role is uh, just the real images. So you can tell that uh, we can gener generate very realistic images that is nearly comparable with uh, real embedding or real image. Next, uh, we also uh, train our model on another more noisy data set, which is called Conceptual Captions 3M data set. And our results are still very realistic. So next, we want to uh, uh, investigate whether our map can satisfy the constraints of Mount map. So the first constraint is t push forward row A is roughly equals to row B. And the, for this, we plot the target image embeddings and the generated embeddings by our method, and also, and also compare with a baseline method given by Parrot et al. 2016. This is a discrete OT method. So you can tell that our, our generated embedding can recover nearly the same as the target embeddings distribution, but uh, the discrete OT method that cannot do so. So the last figure is uh, to verify on the optimality of computed map. Computed map. So on the left-hand side, we we plot the average cosine similarity between the generated image embedding and the ground truth image embedding. This is larger the better because the if they are uh, more similar, then this means our image embedding can better recover the ground truth image embedding. And you can see that we can generate a higher cosine similarity than the baseline method DALI 2 line. And on the right hand side, we plot the uh, cosine similarity with respect to the unrelated text embeddings. This is lower the better because it is unrelated text embeddings. Uh, and you can see that all of these curves are, have values under 0.1. So this means all of this method, all method have a very low overfitting behavior. Next is a, a unpaired image impending task. It also doesn't require paired data. And for this task, the source distribution is images with masked faces, and the target distribution is with intact faces. Uh, and we choose the cost function to be mean squared error in the unmasked area. So this means the push forward map has to keep the unmasked area intact. And uh, you can see that uh, in the bottom, uh, we show the uh, celebrity 128 times 128 images on the test data set, which is unseen during the training. We take the composite image as the output image, and these look uh, quite realistic. These are the results on the test data set of celebrity 64 times 64, and they are also quite realistic. So finally, we present an application about population transportation on Earth. For this one, the source distribution is the current distribution of population on Earth, and the target is the uniform distribution of population or the landmass on Earth. And we choose the cost function as a geodesic distance on a sphere. But in practice, we choose lambda to be less than one to avoid the gradient blow up on uh, of arc cosine near plus one and minus one. So for the left figure, we plot the push forward uh, distribution T push forward row A and the samples of source distributions in blue. Uh, and on the right hand side, we plot the transport map uh, with cost C lambda. So that's all of our uh, results uh, and they are actually 
more uh, interesting results in the paper. And if you are interested, please look at our paper. And if you have questions, please don't hesitate to ask us through emails. Thank you.